Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to focus on updating our toolchain pipeline so that you can actually generate projects across all three platforms, that being Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, all our GenesisLN script does is it calls cmd.exe, which is very much a Windows thing. We're going to want to actually do something different if we're on a different platform, so we're going to need to know which platform we're on. And I fully expect more than just the GenesisLN script to need to know the platform we're on. So I'm going to pull that out into more of a sort of centralized place so that all of the, the different tool scripts can, can query which platform we're, we're being run on. So we're going to start by creating a new file in tools. So I'll call it globals.py. And we'll import globals from all of our other scripts and we'll be able to refer to it to make changes and, and to, to query things. Uh, I also mentioned in the previous video that our version probably shouldn't be defined here. This should just print it. Um, so we'll also pull that out. So maybe that'll be the first thing we do. Uh, so Let's call it uh, uh, version major, we'll say 1.0. And then in order to actually be able to tell which platform we're on, we're going to need to query something in Python that uh, comes from sys and also comes from platform. So we'll import sys and platform. Um, and the reason we need both, and I'll sort of show you what we've got here. So because I'm using um, our bash, uh, sort of WSL uh, interface here. Um, it, it is actually Ubuntu, so it, it will think it's Linux. So for example, if I run Python 3, import sys, um, the, what, we, what we refer to is um, sys.platform. And this will say Linux happily, and it's true. We, we are on a, on a Linux platform, but I actually care that we're in Windows because I, I for gem SLM, on the Windows side, like we, we want to use the Windows version of Premake to make a Visual Studio 2019 project. So, so we, in order to call CMD, we need to actually know that we can do this. Um, so we actually need to ask for a little bit more information. So that's where platform comes in. So if we print platform.uname and set function, um, I have to import platform. So if we print platform uname, you'll see again, I'll see system is Linux, but you'll see at the release is a Microsoft release and the version is a Microsoft version. Um, so, so that's important. Um, what I've got here is a, a, an actual Ubuntu 20.04 uh, virtual machine. And we can do the same thing here. Um, oops. So we'll import sys and platform. And again, we can print sys.platform and that should say Linux. And if we print platform.uname, you can see again, it's Linux, but now that it's Ubuntu, there's no Windows here, basically. Um, and, and that's how we can differentiate between a Windows PC running in WSL and uh, an actual Linux machine like this Ubuntu. Um, so that's why we need both. So what I'll do is I'll just add a couple of helper functions and, and these can just be called um, from anybody, from any script. So we'll just def like is windows um, and, and maybe we'll have, uh, why don't we have like a platform equals sys.platform. So that's the, this will say Linux um, uh, or windows or Darwin for Mac. Uh, and maybe Sort of, we'll start here. This will be your default, and then we'll actually look through those platform dot uname. So uh, I don't know, 4x in platform dot uname, um, and then we'll just check. So like the output that we get. Um, so this function will return a list of things, right? And so if we just iterate over them, that's what x is. X will be Linux, and then node equals desktop that and then release will be that so if we just look for a Microsoft in any one of them if we find one then we'll just stomp it to say we're in Windows um, so let's just search like if Microsoft index.lower um, and actually well, let's say Windows sometimes it looks like it's just Microsoft um, so this should be fine uh, so if Microsoft index.lower uh, we can just stomp the platform so just say platform equals Windows and we'll just break out of this. So at this point, uh, we should be able to just say return um, platform equals equals Windows. And we'll do the same for the other two platforms. Is Linux is Mac. 
Uh, so Linux will be, um, it'll actually say Linux, and then Mac will say Darwin. That's what it'll say on a MacBook. Um, so, so now, and, and again, these are going to be really used to differentiate between this, the sub-process calls that we're going to make in order to actually build this thing. So having this done, we should be able to now just switch over. Oh yeah, let's let's do this. So let's uh, import globals. And this works because they're in the same folder. So um, Python can just, if you do an import like this, it'll just look in the same folder. So we'll import globals and then we'll just print, um, it should just be globals.v underscore major and globals.v underscore minor. So even just this will be a good test. Um, so to make sure that that globals is working. So let's just go back to our here and we'll do a CLI version. And um, so, oh, I accidentally, this should be a capital V. There we go. Let's try that again. But I mean, that looked right. Yeah, you can see. So now we're at 1.0. We've bumped it up and it's coming from globals. So now we'll update Genesis Len to do the same thing. So Genesis Len again, the, 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 cro the call that we make is going to be different. So let's import globals and um, We'll just check. So if globals dot is Windows, then we'll, we know we can do this, and we'll want to generate a Visual Twenty Nineteen with the Windows version of Premake Five. Um, and then we can just do if globals dot is Linux, then we'll want to do something different. Uh, and again, we're gonna, we have this um, the Premake. We have one of each version, so they're not the best named, but dot exe is. Uh, Windows and you can you can omit the .exe when you're calling it through CMD. So we'll want to call the .linux one. So we'll do a subprocess .call, and uh, in this case we're going to call premake slash premake five .linux, and we're going to give it the the sort of project we wanted to make. So here we get a Visual Studio 2019. For Linux we'll use gmake. gmake two, and this will just uh, use a make file, and then it'll allow us to build by just running make. Um, it's just root base sort of standard mic files um, and we'll do the same for Mac except for Mac we can also create a an Xcode project so we can do both um, so maybe for Mac I'll do this and the Mac version has no extension uh, we'll do a gmake2 and then we'll also do an Xcode one and for Xcode it's Xcode 4 which is how you generate that Xcode project so that should be enough. Uh, so if we actually save that and we come back, um, that should be all we need to do. And so in order to get it into our into our virtual machine to test, um, as you can see, I'm just I've just synced what we had what we left off with our, on our last video. So what I can do is pull up fork. What we do is pull up fork, and uh, if we look at our local changes, we've made some changes here. And yeah, actually, we have our so uh, with some Python files that they get compiled like this into a PyC. So so we're actually before we move on, I'm going to just um, exclude .pyc extensions with our in our git ignores star pyc dot pyc. So if we save that, uh, you can see. So real quick, Visual Visual Studio Code actually immediately takes note of that, and, and you see it grays out this file name now. So uh, green means new, uh, orange means modified, and uh, grayed out will means that it's not tracked. And you can see it's gone now here from from fork. Um, but you can see so the the changes that I've made is I've made a couple changes here to Genesis Land, added the globals, and changes to version, and are getting more. So instead of pushing this to main. Um, you know, sort of to, to the master branch, I'm going to push it to a new branch. Uh, so I'll create a new branch here and we'll just call it um, cross platform. This is a, just a branch I'll have for now so that I can make sure that the code is correct before we push everything back to main and, and we, can, we can actually close and, and delete this branch. So I'll create and check out. And if I switch back to my changes, I'm now, I'm, so I'm in cross platform branch now. So I can actually go here, stage all of these changes and we'll actually check them in, and I'll just say cross platform toolchain test, uh, not test, just toolchain changes. I'm actually going to push those changes. And you can see origin should now have a second branch. So again, it's the main, this is your master branch, and this is the cross platform branch that I just created. So switching back over here, I don't have fork installed on my Ubuntu. I don't think it, it has a Linux version, uh, so I'll just use command line. Uh, so if I do a git status, 
it'll show me sort of what branch I'm on. You can see I'm on the main branch. So I can do a, a git checkout. Um, uh, what did I call it? Uh, cross platform. So git checkout cross platform. Mm, git pull origin master. Oops, main. Git pull origin check. platform there we go so pull cross platform and I'm still on main so now I can check out cross platform uh, and I am there so if I go get status you can see I'm now on cross platform and I have pulled that branch so if I uh, if I now try a CLI Janusln okay so so good so this is working so you can see now it's actually tried to call this and it's complaining that it can't uh, I don't have permissions to to run this and that's fine I just have to chmod it add execution uh, for premake slash premake 5 dot Linux so if I try it again yeah you can see it actually worked and it created our make file and uh, just like what we saw with Visual Studio on Windows so if I do an ls now you can see I should have a make file here ready to go uh, and I actually sh well I, I I don't have a build command yet but if I type make because there's a make file here it'll actually try to make it and it uh, looks like our program currently doesn't compile, uh, which makes sense. We have nothing written in that main.cpp file. So that's fine. We'll, we'll fix that later on maybe on the Windows side, but this is good. This means that our gmake command is actually working, and we can just verify that our Linux piece works. So switching back, now that we know that this is good, um, maybe the next step is to actually add that build command, because build will be different. On Windows, we'll actually want to build it using the MS build. Uh, pipeline that Visual Studio does, uh, that Visual Studio uses, and on Linux we'll want to actually use Make, and on Mac we'll use one or the other, uh, based on whether we want to build through Xcode or just through Make files. Uh, so the first thing I like to do here is is really just define sort of what the build process is. So for Windows, because we're we're leaning on Visual Studio, we're going to actually lean on MS Build, which is what the compiler that Visual Studio uses internally, and we're going to say that that's how we're going to build our project. So the first first thing we're going to do is, and the way I like to do this, and it doesn't have to be this way, you can hard code the path, but basically MS build lives within your Visual Studio installation. So for me, that's my C drive, program files x86, Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 community, MS build current bin. And you can see MS build.exe is here. So I don't necessarily think that I like the idea of hard coding this in, into our script. Um, I'd almost prefer this to be something in our environment variables that that means that we can also just run it from uh, Like by just typing MS build basically um, We we want to be able to, to have this be a little flexible So what I'm going to do is uh, Create so again just sort of how like we had this Bash underscore aliases file that you know obviously I have more than than what we need for this but uh, what I've got in here. Uh, we, we also want to have, and, and I like to separate this, it doesn't have to be a separate file, but I like to separate my environment variables into a separate file. So I have this um, bash underscore, I think, env. Yeah, so, so bash underscore env. And this is where I keep my, my environment variables. And you can see, like, I use aliases just for alias commands, and I'll use my env for export commands. And all export does is it it creates a, an environment variable. So this is my environment variable for my Visual Studio path, and then this is the this is what it is. Um, so I like to do it this way. Again, it, you don't have to, it doesn't really matter, but that's how I'll do it here. Um, now, bash underscore env isn't something that's automatically added to your bash rc file, so you'll have to do that first. So if we nano our bash rc, at the very bottom of this file, so I think you'll have maybe up to here. Um, I've added these two. Don't worry about message of the day stuff. But but really, it's the same the same thing. So like just like we did a check for if the bash aliases file exists, and if it does, we actually execute it with this doc command. We'll do the same thing with our bash underscore env file. And this means that whenever you boot this up, um, it'll actually go through. And if there's a file there, it'll actually run through it and and, and execute those commands internally. So make sure we add this in there. Once we have it in there, we can actually nano our dot bash underscore env file and again I've got this done already uh, but you'll have to do this yourself um, basically to export uh, I've called it VS build path so Visual Studio build path I really should have just called it MS build path so the one thing to know here is that the paths are given as per they're exposed to WSL 
So you can see up here, like our, our paths are actually slash MNT slash, and then the, the, the drive letter and then slash, and then the, the actual path. So you can see that's actually how I'm providing these paths. So um, I'll just walk through real quick. So export VS build path equals uh, semicolon, uh, sorry, a quotation mark to start it. And then you, uh, because this string will have spaces in it, you have to also put it in quotation marks. Uh, so you, you, you escape the quotations with the backslash. So quotation marks to start the export command, uh, sort of the, the, the actual export string, and then backslash quotation marks to start the internal string. And then you put the real path. So forward slash MNT, forward slash C, and then the program files x86, the, the whole path here, um, msbuild.exe. And then, it, so when you end it, you do again, you escape that first set of, the internal set of quotation marks, uh, because this path has spaces. And then you put your actual final quotation marks at the end. And that's what you have to type for this piece. Uh, so this is a, just the way I like to do it. Again, you could skip all of this and just do this directly in the code, but anyways. What this means is that I now have this VS build path environment variable that I can refer to in Python. And that's what I'll do, and that's how I'll actually run my MS build command. So coming back here, um, let's go ahead and create a new tool. We'll call it build solution.py. And build solution, uh, so we'll import globals again. We'll sort of need this pretty much for everything, I think. Uh, we'll import um, OS because we'll need OS for um, for the environment variable query. And then we'll, you can just check if globals dot is windows, then we can actually run it. And so again, at this point, because we have to run it from cmd.exe, um, the path that we just defined here, like this is the reason we do the path as per the WSL uh, sort of path format um, is because I want to be able to call this from here from this from the script um, but if but from our Python script we're actually gonna want to run it through CMD so we're gonna convert this into a Windows style path which means C colon and then backslashes instead of forward slashes so the way we're gonna do that is sort of in three steps so first I'll pull out that VS build path so VS build path um, equals OS environ and environ is how you query for environment variables and I'm asking for the VS build path environment variable. And, um, you know, maybe uh, I can also do this. So if you do control tilde, you can actually bring up. Oh, wait, this is a PowerShell. Never mind. Oh, can I change it? Select default shell. WSL bash. Yes, let's do this. So I want a new shell now, and it should be WSL. Awesome. Okay, I didn't even know you could do this. This is great. We don't even have to switch back and forth. Uh, so I just did this really just so that I could test. So actually, uh, PowerShell probably would have been fine. Um, but yeah, so if I say uh, VS build path equals, oh, first I have to import OS. Uh, VS build path equals os.environ VS build path. Oh, and uh, because this is a new shell, this will actually already exist because it runs through our dot bash RC again. Uh, but here we didn't actually do source on that. So if I wanted to use it in this instance, I wanted to, I would have to do just like last time source tilde dot bash underscore env, and that will actually make it make it readily available for this instance. But anyways, uh, so I'll see that, and now I'll just print that just to see what it is. And so you can see again, it's quotation marks. That's the internal string there, and then the forward slashes. So I don't actually want the quotation marks again the quotation marks are really so that it works within the WSL prompt but I don't want them for our uh, Python script so if I do VS build path I can actually trim the first and last characters by doing some some sort of string uh, I think this is called splicing so this is my string and if I do one colon and close it within square brackets this will just start it at one at the first character instead of the zero at. So you can see that first quotation mark is gone. The last one's still there. So I take that string and I trim the last one. And uh, the way you do that is you say colon negative one. And so this is saying the length, how far you want to go. So if you put no number before the colon, you just start from the beginning and you say you want to go uh, negative one is actually a, a really easy Pythonic way to say the string minus the last character. So one colon, colon negative one. Actually, can you combine them? You should be able to combine them. Yeah, that's silly. So again, start at one, go to negative one. Um, so in one 
in one splice I can get the this part of the string. So that's sort of the first step we want. So I should be able to just do one colon negative one. And uh, I'm just putting this up so it's easy to see. Um, VS build path will then be, and uh, here's where I have to sort of take away the slash mnt slash c part and do c colon. For me, it's C, my C drive, so I'm just going to do it that way. But if for you, it might be on the D drive, or I don't know where you install 2019. So let's do the same thing for your for your drive letter. So uh, I could actually even just make this simpler. I'll just splice it more. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So if I say start at eight, yeah, I'll get I'll get uh, slash program files. Oh, sorry, I'll get just program files. So maybe I maybe I do that. So if this becomes eight. I now have this and I have to prepend it with um, C colon slash, right? So if I say print um, C colon and uh, it's forward slash for the drive letter. Actually, it's backslash for the drive. It's always backslash in Windows. So if I do this plus that, I now get C colon backslash and then I have some forward slashes that I have to fix. So that's good. That gets us almost there um, so I'll do that so VS path equals uh, C colon double backslash plus VS build path and then I'll convert all of the forward slashes to backslashes and I can do that with dot replace actually I can do that here too so so um, if I just do this dot replace so the replace is a method you can call on any string in Python and I can replace the forward slashes with backslashes. Now again because I'm writing Python code I need to escape my backslash. So I should put four backslashes here. So escape the first backlash backslash and then escape the second backslash. And if I print that, that actually should be correct because when we actually try to read this and yeah I'm actually gonna need this here as well. So what we're gonna do is just do one so double backslash there as well. There. So we have double backslashes everywhere. That's what we want because that's what subprocess is gonna actually take in and that, that's how subprocess is gonna make sure that it's running the right the right command. So this should have the path sort of windowsified, windowsified. Um, and now we can actually go ahead and run it. So we can now call subprocess.call and we're gonna call cmd.exe um, with our slash c. And then we can we're gonna run vs build path, and we have to give it. So when we when we call ms build, we give it the solution that we're actually running, um, and we give it the configuration. So debug or release. So actually, that's one thing I don't have here is I don't have the solution name. Um, so may, maybe so that I don't have to hard code it in my build SLN script. Maybe I'll just put it in my globals. So like the. So the engine name, let's just do this. The engine name itself is uh, Hippo. And the, the project name that we're actually building is called Hippo Editor. Right, so, so this is what we want to pass into MS Build, hippoeditor.sln. And that's because we know that because that our pre-make file is going to generate that because that's what, that's what we call it here, Hippo Editor. So we can now pass in globals.projectName. And then we also want to pass in um, the configuration, so uh, debug or release. I think it'll default to debug, so let's just try this and see, see if this works, because we don't have to build release anytime soon. So I'll save this. Um, maybe I'll do it in... No, this is fine. I'll just leave it this way. So let's do this. Uh, let me try to run it. So actually, I should be able to just run it from here, which is great. So CLI Genesis uh, actually, yeah, that built it. So CLI build SLN uh, subprocess. Oh, whoops, subprocess needs to get imported. Let's try that again. Uh, hey, yeah, that's perfect. That actually worked. So I wonder what it built in. Probably, probably debug. Um, oh, this project doesn't contain the configuration and platform combination of debug colon 132. Um, Okay, so that's that we might have to pass that in then. So uh, 
the way we do that, it, and maybe I'll define that up here so that we have an easy way to change it to release later if we want to. I'll just say um, config equals debug. Um, and the way you pass that in is just, again, another uh, parameter here. And um, the parameter is forward slash property colon configuration equals something. And um, here we'll just do this uh, format uh, or config. So let me save that and try it again. And that did not work. So let's try again and see what happened. MS build 8013, this project doesn't contain the configuration and platform combination of debug. And that's what we gave it in our here, right? Yeah, we have debug and release. Oh, you know what we're, uh, we're actually missing? This is just the project name. I think I actually have to give it the solution file. So, um, Try this project file does not exist hippo editor.slm so let's just confirm that we are what we think we are oh yeah right so hippo editor is the project but our solution is actually called hippo.slm because that's our workspace so yeah sorry we actually we don't want project name we want engine name let's try that now there we go that's actually building so you can see um, the configuration that we passed in. And so again, I guess let's just try without this just to see what happens. Um, yeah, I guess it'll default to something uh, here. It'll default to debug and x64. But if we wanted to give it, if I think I'm going to leave this in because if we wanted to give it a release, um, we should see it actually build in release. And you see that it does. So cool. Okay, we'll leave this in debug for now. Uh, we'll probably add a way to like pass in flags to these tools so we can actually define this. Um, but this is good. So now it's actually failing because uh, there's a linker error. There's no main file. There's no. It doesn't know where main.cpp is. Uh, sorry, main. The main function is, and that's because we didn't write it. So if we open our hippo editor folder, look at our source main.cpp, it's empty. So um, just to get something building, let's add this. So include IO stream. Our favorite is main trim zero. Maybe I'll just do a quick hello YouTube, and uh, we'll just do a system pause so we can see the output, which doesn't matter because we're on a command line, but that's fine. But you can see now that I've got an int main, uh, my build actually succeeded. And so this is the same build steps that would happen if we actually ran Visual Studio. I actually haven't opened the solution yet, this video, and that, that's that's neat. We don't actually have to. Um, but if I open it, you'll see that obviously the main.cpp file has changed, and it'll build in the same way. So if I do, if I uh, just build it, build solution, Actually, it's already up to date, and that's because um, MS Build, what we just ran on the command line, uh, it already built everything for us. Visual Studio knows that and doesn't have to rebuild anything. If we remove this, for example, and ask it to rebuild, um, then it'll actually do something, and you can see it rebuilt main.cpp. And if we go back to our command line, we should actually see the second build do nothing, just like the beginning. And you can see it doesn't do anything. So this is good. This means we can build it in either, in either place and it will it will take in the other one. Let's put that back. Um, we'll rebuild. And now we have our, our program. And uh, it should actually be, so it'll end up in a bin folder in the project folder. So if we look at full hippo editor bin, um, this we have our bin folder in our OBJ folder. So uh, this is why we exclude bin from our git ignore. I guess I don't, I don't exclude OBJs. Um, but I actually like to rename this to bin-obj just so that it's it's in the same place alphabetically. But anyways, our bin will have a debug and a release because we did build both, but the release didn't finish actually because it was broken at the time. But you see we have this hippo editor.exe and I should be able to double click that. That might not work from Visual Studio, but in here I have a bin folder, debug, hippo editor.exe, and there it is. 
there is our piece of software that we just built from the command line. Now, one more thing that I am kind of nitpicky about and I'm not a fan of is the fact that the bin and OBJ folders end up in the project folder. Um, as you have multiple projects, that tends to get a little messy just bouncing around everywhere. So I actually like to define the bin and OBJ folders to be here at the root directory for all projects. Um, and the way we'll do that, and, and they'll, they'll live uh, sort of beside each other um, within these debug and release folders. Um, but the way I like to do that is basically, I'll just delete these because I don't want them here. Um, and in my, here, in my premake.5.lua pre file, I can actually tell it where where I want it to go. And the way I'll do that is I'll define it once up here and then I'll use it everywhere in each project as we go through. So first, the way premake calls these things, it calls it target directory and uh, I believe object directory, obj directory. Um, so we'll define those here. So our target directory will be, um, and I want to just at the root level, so because this premake5.lua is here at the root level, I want it to be here. So not in any subfolders. The folder will be called bin. And then uh, I'll make a subfolder within it. And again, I can, I can use these, um, these special sort of uh, pre, uh, variable names to sort of define what that looks like. And I can use a couple different things. Um, here, I just care about the build configuration. So debug versus release, that sort of thing. So I'll do that here. And it's um, uh, percent sign open squiggly and it's CFG for config um, dot build config, build CFG. And this will be debug or release based on these configurations up here. And then I also have to give it the project name because I, I, I want it all to live under the folders, but I, I don't want any clashing between, for example, a, a hippo editor file and some other file that might have the same name. So then I'll do, do us another folder within that, uh, and, I'll, and this is where I'll put the project name. Um, for the object dir, the, the sort of temporary temporary bin uh, direct directory, I'll just do bin dash obj so that again it's sort of in the same place alphabetically, and I'll keep it the same. So it's going to be sorted the same way. It's all going to live in the same place. And then all we have to do here is in the project uh, settings, we'll just set that target dir to be our t dir from above, and we'll set our obj dir to be our o dir from above. And that's all we have to do. So every time I make a premake 5lua change, I have to tell it to regenerate the solution. So CLI SLN, and you can see it does. And now if I do a CLI build SLN, it should put them here and it does. You can see our, our project folder stays clean. It's just code in there and obviously the project file and our bin is actually at the root level. So if I go here now, bin debug hippo editor hippo editor.exe and I can just double click that and run it and you can see that it runs okay I think one more script that I want to add here given that we know what this looks like um, I just want to be able to run this from the command line too like I, can, I should be able to just type like CLI run and that should just do it um, also we can make this better so I mean while we're at it since we're having so much fun let's go ahead and make that change so uh, first let's just fix this real quick so in our CLI.py I think um, this this is what fails right like this this line fails if there's nothing there so I should just do a try catch so try to do that and catch the exception this is an exception that it'll it'll, it'll spit out um, actually it's not an exception it's just a print try so it will always succeed so we might have to be a little more We might have to do something a little more intricate here. So, I mean, intricate, I say intricate, it's really not that bad. I think we just need to check the path, right? So we, ha we have OS, so so like this path is what we're running. So maybe I'll just take this out, I'll call it um, script, script equals this. This is our script, so this shouldn't change anything. I should be able to save this and then CLI, just run, build this align, yeah, everything still works. Um, but now I can actually check for the script's existence because the problem here is that it actually tries to run our run.py, which doesn't exist, so it just it just prints this out. Um, if it was an exception, you'd see it say that. So um, let's just do a quick check. So oh, with OS, I can do um, os.path.exists, yeah, and I'll just pass in script since it's already a full path. So if it exi if it exists, just call it. Um, else, we can just say print invalid command, and um, we'll just print out cmd. So yeah, this, this should actually just fix it. So now CLI run, we'll just say execute run, invalid command run. And actually maybe we'll bring this, um, let's 
let's bring this up here. So only say you're executing it if you're actually executing it. Otherwise, print invalid. So yeah, sure, I like that. Um, but you can see that uh, something like build SLN does work. So cool. CLI dot run uh, or sorry, CLI run. And the way we're gonna add run, um, it'll be pretty straightforward. So again, tools, new file, run.py. So for our run.py script, uh, really what we want to do is just sort of build the path to this hippoeditor.exe folder or file that we see here and um, and just execute it. So again, for Windows, we'll use subprocess.call with CMD and for everything else, we'll just run it uh, sort of in line. Um, and we'll fix, so I'll, I'll just keep checking this all into this uh, cross-platform branch and then I'll fix it on the Linux side to make sure that I get it all working and then we'll merge it back to master. Um, so in this case, uh, the first thing we need is just import global so we know which platform we're on. And then we'll need a couple things here, so OS and subprocess. Um, and I'll show you why we need those in a sec. Um, and so, yeah, if globals dot uh, is windows. Um, so if we're, if, if we're in windows, we're going to want to do a subprocess dot call. And again, it's um, cmd.exe pass in forward slash C and then we we'll need a couple of things and, and I'm just from experience we want to run this CMD out of this directory like the hippo editor directory if we're gonna run hippo editor.exe as opposed to like our root directory where this Python script is being executed from and the reason we want to do that is because when we start adding things like uh, image assets or any sort of other scripts or whatever it is um, it's all going to be somewhere within the project directory because it'll be bundled in with like alongside the exe. Um, and if we try to run it from here without running it from this folder, then we're not like those links aren't going to work. Um, so the way you do that is uh, after you've provided the path to what you're building, you actually give it an additional uh, parameter here called the current working directory. And um, you'll set that to the actual directory of that of where that project is. So So maybe Maybe we'll just sort of build it out because the other thing we're going to need to know is, like we said, we, we, have, we put it in this debug or release folder, so we're going to need to know that as well. So maybe we'll just define sort of what the config is. It's debug. Um, again, currently we don't have a way to change this, but we'll, we can always extend these scripts later. Um, but we'll leave it that way, and then we'll have um, sort of the project name is going to be hippo, like hippo editor that's going to come from our globals. So we'll have um, proj name equals uh, globals. Dot, uh, we can just refer to it. That's fine. Um, so maybe I'll just build that direct, like that path, right? So the path, we're going to give it a full path. So, um, our, let's just call it, uh, executable path, maybe X path, exe path. Um, and so it'll be our current directory slash bin slash the config slash the project name. Oops. Um, and then slash the project name.exe. And actually, I'll leave that last part out because it's not always the project name.exe. Um, I should actually just be able to say the project name because CMD doesn't care about the exe extension and all other platforms will just have the name of the, of the, of the project. So this actually should be good. And then we can format this with um, OS. So this is what we need OS. Get current working directory, just like we did for another script. Um, and then we'll, it's the config and then globals dot um, project name. It's project name because it's the hippo editor project, not the solution name for hippo.sln. Um, and then globals dot project name again, because it'll always be named the same. Um, so let's just print that real quick, just to make sure that it looks okay. Um, so if I do CLI run, Yeah, you can see the path is is correct here. So slash mnt d programming. So bin debug hippo editor hippo editor. Uh, so this is good. What I need to do now is uh, really just sort of take take this path basically and feed it through to subprocess dot call. And maybe because we're giving it the full path. Like maybe we don't want to run this through cmd.exe. We actually might want to just run it directly because it is an executable on its own. And we don't need to pass it in any parameters. So maybe instead of this uh, sort of list of things, we'll just give it exe path. Because um, that actually should work. 
And then the only things that we have to do is, like I said, we want to make sure that this is run from this directory. So we can actually do that with a CWD current working directory equals, and I'll give it that exe path. Ooh, actually I can't because I've added the, the last piece there. So maybe I'll just remove that from here. This is the path. And then this will run um, this exe path and then globals.project name again. So basically all I did was move that last sort of open close squiggly to this piece. So uh, the path is here, this has the forward slash and then this will have the executable name afterwards. That way we can give it the actual current working directory to run it from. And um, if we actually try to run this, it'll say no such file or directory. And that makes sense. Does that make sense? We're calling os.getw get current working directory from here. Actually, this is completely wrong. We still need to give it this list. And what, what this is going to do is it'll give it rexe as the, as, a, as the first parameter. And this should actually um, run it. But actually, it might not even like that because, yeah, it's, it's not going to like this because it's still a path that's built from WSL. So it'll, it'll be like we'll have to do that, that sort of window, Windows Safi version like we did in build SLN here. And I'm actually not sure that I want to keep doing that. I mean, it's not too bad. It just it's another place where we have to now hard code our drive letter. Whereas, like, if we just had an actual batch file that would run it for us, we could just run that from here. So, like, maybe I'll do it. I'll do it both ways, right? So, build a salon, We'll do it this way, and maybe run dot pi. We'll just have an accompanying run dot bat because it makes it a lot easier to run it that way. With run dot bat, we can just pass in the, the, it'll run from this directory. We can just pass in sort of the config and the name and it'll just be able to do it. So maybe maybe we'll do that. And I'll leave this just because we will probably want this for, for the other platforms, but for Windows specifically, we don't want any of this. We just want to run um, cmd.exe with our slash C and we're going to give it uh, our batch file. So in tools, actually globals has this, I think. Uh, do, does globals have this? Or where did I put that tools path? Maybe that was my CLI. Yeah, it's here. Um, so maybe let's not do, let's just move this to global. So globals dot, um, we'll import globals. Oh wait, sorry. See, we can't do that. We can't do that because um, it's not in the same folder. So yeah, we said it's tools, dir is tools. Um, we can't put it in globals.py because it's not in the same folder. And to try and import something from a different folder, it's a little tricky. Um, so I'll just take it. I, again, don't really mind the, it, it, this name isn't gonna change. So I don't mind having it in two places, but I don't want it in every script. So I'm going to just do this, tools dir is tools, and now I can refer to that from the run.py script. Um, and the reason I want that is because I want to run my batch file. So it'll be the tools directory, um, and then slash, and again, this is Windows, two backslashes, and then uh, we'll call it run.batch, right? That's what we called it. Uh, Globals.toolsdir. So we're going to run our run.bat, and that is going to, it's going to be very, simple we actually need to give it some info right so um i would it would need to know the config that we've got here and the the project name that we've got in our globals so uh again the beauty of sort of having this is that we can just pass in more parameters like this uh and so these anything i pass in after dot bat will be treated as an argument uh, on the batch file side which i can refer to with a special character uh, so i'll pass in the config as the first parameter, and I'll pass in the project name as the second parameter. And on the batch file side, uh, all we do is uh, first we'll do echo off so that it doesn't print back everything you're writing out. Uh, and then we'll, because I wanted to run from that directory, I wanted to I wanted to do a cd, so change directory, go into bin slash the config, which is um, the first parameter, percent one. And then the project folder, which is percent two. So go to that folder and then actually start percent two. So run percent. Actually, I don't even think I need to start. I should be able to just do this. 
This is what my batch file will do. It, you can't run this batch file on its own because it needs parameters to be passed in. So we'll run it, we'll pass them in through our tools.py. Sorry, our run.py. So this actually should be enough, and it's not, so why not? So let's see. Um, maybe we won't echo off. Oh, sorry. Maybe we won't do that. Um, can we echo dollar one? Echo dollar two. Hmm, maybe we're not even getting to the right place here. So what is this? Tools directory. Oh, sorry. I have this. I still have this current working directory thing. I actually almost want this to be the current directory because I'm, I'm, at, I'm calling it from within. Yeah. So I actually want this to be os.get current working directory. So from this directory, run command.exe and it will run that for me. So let's try that. Yeah, that worked. You can see hello YouTube here. So our, our there, that's actually it. So let's just pull these back out. Echo off and we'll do it again. There it is. So now we have our run command on Windows that will be able to run our uh, actual built software. That's pretty sweet. So now I should be able to do CLI, GenSLN, build SLN, run all back to back. And you can see that it generated with pre-make, it built with MS build, and it ran the output, which is placed here. So that's awesome. I think I just want to make sure it works on Linux. And then it'll probably, I also, I don't think I've actually added the sort of Mac side of things to this much, but um, we can always come back to that. Uh, or even it'll all be very straightforward. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to fork. Look at my current changes. And so we'll just, this is actually a neat way to also just make sure that we haven't written anything silly. So yep, we'll just have our main.cpp updated. Our build SLN script is new. It only builds for Windows, so we'll fix that right now. Globals, we've added a couple things there. Our run.bat, which we created, and our run.py, which we created again only for Windows. And then uh, we modified our CLI, yep, to give us a better print when we have something invalid, and our premake 5.lua. It's perfect. So cross platform, I should really get better at these. Uh, so this is really, it, I'm not being too careful here because we're gonna, once we merge back, this prior branch goes away, but um, I'll just say adding, uh, build SLN and run scripts for uh, only supports Windows. So we'll commit, push, it's up to date. So now we'll switch back to our virtual machine. And I can do another git pull um, and it's cross-platform, origin cross-platform. And you can see it pulled the changes that I just pushed. So um, I should be able to just code this, open this up in Visual Studio Code. Um, and actually, similarly to the other one, I should be able to just have my, my, my terminal at the bottom here, instead of having to switch back and forth. Here. So okay, I'm here to fix, to add build SLN support for Windows, or sorry, for, for Make. So we'll just, extend this so it's globals dot is Linux so for Linux um, our GenSLN command will actually create make files with gmake so we're actually going to build it with make and uh, that, that's pretty straightforward um, just a process dot call we're gonna call make and uh, make is the, the software and again all of my sort of build environment stuff is installed but if you try to call make and it doesn't work you'll have to just install it with like a sudo apt get make or something like that um, so I'll call make and I have to give it so similarly here to how we gave it the config at the end here with the property um, I also need to give it the config here so uh, that's easy we just say config equals and we'll just pass in config and that should be all we need to do for Linux. And I'll just, for the purposes of having it here, I'll, I'll do the same on Mac. So for Mac right now, we'll just say we support make files and then we can always come back and add the Xcode support. It, it's, it's not difficult, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so then in our GenSLN, I am doing this. Okay, I'm already doing this for Mac, so, so that will work. So if I build a SLN, it should run make. And so if I try this, so uh, GenSLN, build SLN. You can see that actually worked, it's done. 
and uh, again it's created the bin project and then it, here's the here's the actual executable so that was pretty quick our run is going to be very straightforward as well uh, basically we just want oops oh yeah this is our run yeah. so if globals dot actually for windows is the only one that needs this exe thing and the batch file so actually i should be able to use else because the executable, regardless of who builds it, will always end up in the same place and it'll always be called hippo editor. So we'll do a subprocess dot call. And uh, we're gonna wanna give it two things here. So we have the path. This is the path to the executable. Um, so we'll give it that path and then the name of the software, so which will be the same. Um, so we'll just do the format exe path and then globals.project name so we'll do that and that will run it and then this is where we want to add the the fact that it will run out of this folder because again like if if we have any external assets or anything local to this fo folder like that that got bundled with the game whether it's loose file or in a zip file somewhere um, we need to know that we're like we need to run it from that directory so we'll just do that real quick by saying as an additional parameter to subprocess call after the list, cwd equals, and I can give it exe path. And that should be enough for our run to work. So if I do cli run, um, that's perfect, that works. And the error that we get is because that system pause that we added in our main.cpp, this is a Windows apparently thing. I, there might be some other proper cross-platform way to do it, but system pause, is, is a windows thing so let's just remove it um that's not a big problem it's not a big deal uh and now i should do a cli run and oh right rebuild build sln run and again this is this is the beauty of it i can just quickly type cli build sln run and it'll do that and i can see the changes right away okay so now we have a tool chain that actually can generate build and run our solutions and our executables all from within the command line uh, and it's cro fully cross-platform across Windows and the Unix, basically. Uh, so that's a pretty cool place to end it. Uh, so until next time, I will see you all later.